Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. What you see in front of you is the Asus ROG Strix Z690E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. It's the one that I bought off of Reddit with a malfunctioning memory channel. And because I'm still waiting for my tools to arrive from customs, I am kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But in this video, I kind of want to talk about the geography of the board, the expandability, the functionality, what I like, what I don't like, and um, an overall, just my opinion of the motherboard itself. As it stands, in my opinion, uh, this motherboard is a marvel of ingenuity uh, with the amount of functionality that they have compacted onto a extended ATX motherboard. I, I, it is it is just uh, mind boggling with how much um, I don't want to say value for dollar because it is still a 500 X retail motherboard. But it is still impressive with the amount of um, function there that it is on it. It being a Z690, a LJ 1700 uh, motherboard, this obviously supports Intel 12, 13, and 14 generation. Depending on how Intel 15th gen, and I am only speculating here, but depending on how Intel approaches 15th gen, this might even have expandability for 15th gen as well. Uh, in terms of power, you have two EPS connectors over here in the um, top left corner. If you're facing the motherboard with your 24 pin over here, you have two addressable RGB, three fan connectors up at the top, two more fan connectors over here, USB 3.1, three PCI Express times 16 physically, one, two, three, M.2 slots. The positive aspect of this motherboard is obviously the um, continuity between 12, 13, and 14 generation CPUs being LJ1700 and uh, DDR5 memory going up to 6400 megahertz under XMP profile. <clears throat> this motherboard is, in my opinion, absolutely fantastic. When I was testing it and it was only working on a single channel, it was very, very snappy, very, very responsive. Uh, it was fantastic. Because the what I am suspecting is the bent pins on the CPU socket, I was not able to make it uh, very stable to get any type of numbers. So in terms of how performing it is going to be compared to, say, um, another one of the same family or maybe even comparative to the amd alternatives out there i am only going to be speculating so i will i will avoid giving anything that's uh, that i could label as concrete in terms of some more functionality let's talk about the back of the motherboard in terms of functionality and connectivity on the rear of the motherboard you have displayport hdmi 10 USB type A at, alongside two USB type C, as well as um, Intel 225V, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And uh, that is the most connectivity that I have seen on a motherboard in um, both professional and amateur lifetime. You also have Intel wireless and Intel Bluetooth uh, antenna, as well as the 7.1 channel gold plated uh, jacks over here. In terms of electrical, you have 18 plus one power delivery, um, PCI, uh, sorry, M.2 PCI Express 5, two M.2 PCI Express 4, PCI Express Gen 5, X16, PCI Express. Gen 3, X1, PCI Express, Gen 3, even though the physical is X16, electrical is only an X4, and then PCI Express, Gen 4, physically X16, electrically X8. You also have four USB 2 headers, TPM, Thunderbolt, and front audio uh, connector. 
Now, if you are interested in the onboard uh, spatial, you cannot access it through the rear point uh, panel. You only can access it through uh, this connector right here. And uh, somewhere I had to look at where I saw it in the um, exceptions of the audio. Oh yeah, there it is right here. So the rear panel line-out port does not support spatial audio. If you wish to use spatial audio, make sure to connect your rear to, uh, sorry, to connect your audio output device to the audio jack on the front panel of your chassis. So it is only accessible through this connector to the front of the chassis. That's that's, uh, that's pretty much it, the uh, physical overview. Uh, without actually booting into the motherboard, you, you can't really um, see anything. Uh, the Q code reader from Asus, which is a pretty much a staple on higher end motherboards, is actually a very nice touch to have helps with diagnostics. Um, what I personally would have preferred to see, and this is more of a... than a <clears throat> um, of a professional complaint is I would have loved to see a power on and reset button on the board itself, um, especially when you don't have it inside a chassis and you don't want to reach for a screwdriver every time you want to short the two pins. Having a power on and reset button, well, uh, I guess I probably see the reason why they haven't put it is because they would be struggling to find a spot where on the motherboard which understandable uh <clears throat> in terms of uh connectivity as well you still have usb 3.1 usb 3 6 sata and um obviously the m.2 slots that we talked about I am really, really excited to repair this motherboard. I know that the CPU is already in there. Um, it's just to additionally protect the pins, but I am extremely excited to repair this motherboard and hopefully bring it back to its former glory of functionality and blazing fast speed so that, you know, whoever uh, manages to get this motherboard off of me uh, after it has been repaired can continue to kick ass in, um, in both video games and uh, productivity workloads so uh i am very very excited and looking forward to that uh thank you for watching my uh very quick and very opinionated uh review of the uh, rog strix z690e gaming wi-fi um i know you probably have a question on your minds well why are you reviewing an asus if they ripped you off well it's it's a little difficult to review um when asus is probably one of the most popular products on the market and um with uh with one of the largest market shares so if somebody else is uh getting rid of an msi board um speaking of msi i do have another z790 um msi motherboard which is coming in uh again bought somebody who said that uh the memory channel is also not working on it so i'm also excited to look into that yeah i'm still not on friendly terms with asus would i probably accept a i don't know endorsement or whatever not really i i'm still very negatively uh leaning towards them simply because the whole situation with the warranty claim didn't go exactly as i wanted it to um whatever i can complain whether or not they listen it's it's their problem but uh this is kind of where we're at now. So as soon as my tools get to customs, I know it's been uh, a little bit of time and you guys keep hearing the same thing, but I mean, they're stuck in customs. It's nothing that I can do to uh, make them hurry up. Uh, I have reached out to the seller on um, Amazon, which 
they have no idea why it's taking so long. Um, so I guess the only thing I can do is to continue to wait and uh, hopefully they will, sorry, my tools will come at a reasonable uh, at a reasonable time frame from customs and the next video we are going to be talking about the issues and uh, how i have come to the conclusion that it is the uh, in my opinion that it is the uh, the socket connector that's causing the issues and not something else thank you very much for watching i will see you guys in the next one